Hi, everyone, and welcome to AB Conversations, where we will help you CFP your way out of it, a podcast where you get into the minds of a couple certified financial planners on how we think and feel about everyday financial planning questions and what should really matter most to you. A healthier financial life starts now. Hey, Adam, welcome back. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. Hey, thanks for having me back. I know I got kicked off the last one, but it's, uh, it's good to be back talking to you. Well, when you have an opportunity to speak with a celebrity, uh, you have to be, you know, kicked out for a week, but All I good. completely get it. You are going to be the expert on this one, though. I know you oh. were so super excited about this topic. <laughs> um, so I'm along for the ride. Yeah. Why don't you introduce it? Yeah, it's so as people are listening to this, we're probably now a few weeks removed from the whole mega millions lottery hysteria as that oh, yeah. jackpot grew and grew and grew and, you know, across the one billion dollar mark. And then, of course, it was headlines all over the news. Um, and you just happened to pop into my office and it was on on the TV. And you said to me, what would you do if you won the lottery? <laughs> and it's such a natural thought process, right? We've, I'm, I'm picturing, I'm going back years ago, back to Ameriprise office in the big cubicle farm. And at that point, whatever the jackpot was, then it was probably like 500 million, which felt like, I, I mean, it is, but it felt like the, all the money in the world. And yeah. we were, we were kind of going through that exercise as a, as a group of, okay, well, what would we do if we really had what would feel like an, a limitless pile of money? What would you do with your life? And then very, uh, for us through the planning work that we do very natural segue into, well, that's a, that's a perfect exercise to go through yeah. to help people figure out if, if money was not an option, what would you do? What would you change about your life? Where would you place yeah. focus? What are the things that you value? And it's, it's something that we're trying to, to implement in our own practice way more commonly. Um, but it, it was just, it was a great combination of Headlines in the news, every, I shouldn't say everyone, most people are kind of captured by that. Uh, hope is not a strong enough word, desire, yeah, right? To just to win the lottery and now you have this pool of money. Yeah, and I think I, I like this as a topic. I think I might've given you some pushback and you're like, hey, we should do a podcast on that. Because <laughs> I, I think I probably fit the mold like many of the listeners going, yeah, but the odds of winning, like the realist in yeah. you doesn't even mm -hmm. really want to play because like, what are the odds of winning? Yeah. It was one in, they, yeah, they say it's one in 302 million. Okay. So um, the odds Wait. of getting struck by lightning are yeah. way more common than that. And I know you, yeah. you heard it. Uh, apparently, ahead. yeah, one, one in 15,000. Which yeah, that's fright. That's frightening. <laughs> that's yeah. When you think of, do, do I buy a ticket and play the lottery knowing that I have a one in 302 million chance? Or if I go outside when it's, there's a lightning storm, I have a one in 15,000 chance of getting struck by lightning. I think I'll stay inside and not buy the lottery ticket. Yeah. Or, you know, not interact with a vending <laughs> I, machine, which I have here on the notes. <laughs> I found this crazy statistic. Apparently there is a, a not zero chance one in 112 million that you will be crushed to death by a vending machine so all right so put all those things together put them in a blender um yeah and here's the i guess here's the point in kind of getting into podcast world where we really want to use this as a good um exercise and that's what it is yeah. The, yeah. the the point in saying all right what if what if is just to put you through that thought exercise and i think you kind of teed it up pretty nicely if we truly believe that money is the tool that's going to help people live the life they want to live, then we really do need to think about what do they value most? And yeah. we're going to ask questions that will get you to the heart of thinking about that. And it is yeah. to get you outside of the comfort zone. It is to get you out of reality. I mean, what, what dreams come true unless you're willing to kind of extend your mind past what's right in front of you. So there's yeah. a couple different variations of that question, but I think that's maybe the meat of the podcast today. Let's talk yeah. about that so that anybody listening, whether you think lottery world or not, you get your mind kind of in that space where you're willing to go, all right, this is truly what matters to me. Yeah, there's a, there's a gentleman by the name of George Kinder who kind of pioneered this side of our profession, this side of the planning world that is focused 
I guess I'm not, I, I don't want to misquote or, or misrepresent. I think he was part of like the life planning side of, Institute, of our yeah. business. You got yeah. It. So it's, there, there are essentially three questions that are designed to remove those limitations, right? Because that is the natural human tendency is to live within these boundaries that either we create in ourselves or just society in general, you're just benchmarking to other people. Um, and it's very natural to just kind of fall into these tropes of what, what, you know, what do you want out of life? Well, I want to retire at some point. Well, sure, because maybe, maybe you do, maybe you don't, but that's what you think should be the answer to that question. And that's where we kind of just, we want to remove kind of those boundaries from the equation, knowing that in particular, that, that first question, were the odds of any of us listening yeah. to this hitting the lottery and having a limitless amount of money is basically zero. But the exercise is still worthwhile that let's pretend, and I'll use, I'll use the word exactly. So imagine that you are financially secure. You have enough money to take care of your needs both now and in the future. How yep. would you live your life? What would you do with the money? And would you change anything in your life? So what's beautiful about that, um, and I know I can tie a lot of financial planning interactions like back to like parenting, as you probably can too, <laughs> it's that the, the surface reaction to that is, you know, well, I would go buy this, or maybe I, yeah, I would right. stop work. And I actually looking yeah. back on it, I, th I think that's why I asked you the question when I came into your office. I was like, hey, oh. if you win the lottery, you're, you're not going to stop working, right? You're not just going to leave. I'll, be, uh, I'll become a bigger <laughs> client. Yeah, there you go. Um, but, but tying it back to like interactions, the, the surface reaction to, okay, I'm going to buy this or I'm going to change this usually comes with a follow-up question from us, like, but why? Yeah. And then you go deeper, but why? And you can get to this whole, like, well, I want a vacation. I had to take this vacation, but why? It's probably yeah. to spend, spend meaningful time with certain people in your life. All right. Mm -hmm. I want to buy this boat. Well, why? Because it meant a lot to me for me to have that interaction with my grandfather and I want yeah. that for my grand you dive into like the things that really matter. And like you said earlier, you're removing money as that's the tool, but that's not right. the purpose. Yeah, I think it is. It, and it's incredibly natural. And I think it is the first thing that pops into a lot of people's minds that I'll, I'll throw a number out because it's nice and round. Say it's $50 million. And like you said, it's, well, I'll, I'll pay off the house. Maybe we'll move. I'll buy this. I'll buy that. Great. Now you have $47 million. Now what? Like you're, yeah. <laughs> unless, um, uh, unless, I mean, we've seen, I, there's a, there's a TV show, you know, lottery ruined my life. So uh, clearly, you know, having enough money doesn't necessarily fix the spending <laughs> problem, but the thought process here is there, you could clearly spend that money. But for most people that we work with, it's, you could check some boxes on some things, but having that pool of money still only gets things. And that's where we want to kind of turn that conversation to the life side of things, the values, making sure that you now take these funds and allocate them to what really it feels meaningful in somebody's life. Those examples you gave are those perfect connections to, yeah. well, we're going to, we're going to buy a vacation home, not because I want to buy a vacation home, but because of what that will allow me to do in my life. If it's spending time with your family, spending time with grandkids, whatever that may be, that's just the conduit to that end result yeah what what makes you feel fulfilled and i yeah. so i think that's maybe the positive way to look at it that that second kinder question is actually yeah. the more negative way to look at it and i realize that even posing this question in our conference room can be really somewhat uncomfortable because i think we've all <laughs> had people in our lives that were told hey you're now sick in all likelihood you may only have five to 10 years to live, you know, in our scenario here and asking the question, the kinder question, the good part is you're not going to feel sick. The bad news is right. you, you, you know when that end point is. So what will you do with the time you have remaining? How would you change your life if you actually knew when that end was coming and recognize that question is supposed to get to somewhat of a similar <laughs> result? Like yeah. if, now, if now money's not the variable, well, time is the ticking thing. Yeah, I, I think people would probably prioritize things differently. Yep. And I'm glad you used that word because that's the first thing that pops into my mind, right? You, you now you remove the money part of the equation, pretend you have everything that you need, fine. But now that time constraint 
added to it, it forces you to really evaluate and prioritize what matters and how you're going to spend your time. Like that, that, that in and of itself is just a hugely powerful thought exercise to go through. And it's, as you said, it's, it's not the easiest process to go through. And for many people and myself included, it's not something that you think about on a very regular basis. It's, you know, you're, you're in the busyness of life and I, I'm, maybe I'm projecting, but I very can very easily, you know, put, this can be therapy. This, Go ahead. <laughs> great. For, you know, our tens of listeners, you know, put, put those things in a box. Life is going to happen. We'll worry about that stuff later. But yeah, go, going through this exercise, it really does kind of force you to really start to dig a little bit deeper into what, what are your values? And, and this question in particular, if time was a constraint, how would you prioritize the things that you're doing? and where you're spending your time uh, before the end. Because it's like reverse engineering. The answer yeah. to the first question may be things that give you, provide you that freedom of time so that you now I can spend it. But how many mm -hmm. other conversations do we have? Let's take, let's take the sickness, the, the health out of it, where yeah. somebody's transitioning to retirement and that big right. daunting question is, my gosh, what am I gonna do all day? It forces <laughs> you to think about how you're going to feel fulfilled and how you're gonna spend time if money's not a variable. So mm -hmm. I, I think this is a tougher question for us to ask, but it's yeah. equally important because if you can, if you can put yourself in that position and mentally think about what that would mean to you, I think you're gonna have some really good raw information to share about who you are and what you value. Yeah, yes, absolutely. And, and ultimately, for us going through this, this process, it, it helps, sorry, it helps us in working with clients, if, if they are going through this exercise and, and helping prioritize what's important to, to them, then our job is to try to align what they're doing financially, to either help make that happen, or at least evaluate the trade offs. But ultimately, when any decision point comes down the line, if we know what those values are, we can either quickly eliminate things that don't fit or at least Bingo. start to yeah. talk through, you know, those different options and feel like we're leading them in a direction or at least giving education on what may fit um, by just having that additional context. And I, it's, I don't know, it's, it's just, it's incredibly interesting to me to, that our profession is slowly going this way um, and focusing on, on this, the value side of what actually matters to people and not just, you know, I have an IRA, how should I invest it? Well, I don't know <laughs> what matters. <to> people. <laughs> we're not just, we're growing it for the sake, sake of growing it is all well and good, but what's the point? Yeah, and maybe this is where we can segue into just a couple examples because it seems fitting yeah. to go through it here and let's not forget the third kinder question. Yep, but yep. You hit the nail on the head with how, how we advise people really just does need to come back to these questions because it's not just trying to align things, but we need to motivate people into action then. And I think part of the trouble for us sometimes is that we deal, I mean, we deal with people that are fiscally responsible. That's probably yeah. why they're hiring us in the first place, right? <laughs> right, right. Um, and they almost prevent themselves from doing certain things that I yes. think would be really meaningful to them because they are so responsible and they don't want to run out of money and they want to feel like they're doing the right thing. So, mm -hmm. you know, recent situation is traveling to family in Georgia, yeah. by the way, the country, not the state, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not, it's not cheap to go see their granddaughter now, but it's mm -hmm. something that in the absence of being able to do it in the future time, right. The yeah. granddaughter is yeah. only going to be so little for so long. Yeah, You just want to encourage them to figure out with us, like, okay, what makes that work? It's not our job to tell people that they can't do things. It's our job to say, here are the trade-offs and planning we can do to make this work for you because this is what you prioritize. Just yep. one example. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I love that one. It's somebody we met with recently, um, just going, just started going through this process and, and was able to kind of articulate, I don't need anything grandiose, but my dream is to have a cabin in the woods with my dog, with my family, drinking a cup of coffee in the morning, peace and quiet. By the way, I, I need a large SUV so that we can all pile into it and get there at a moment's notice. If that's what I get, great. But even just us having that as kind of that, uh, 
maybe not necessarily the focal point, but as a, a kind of guiding light that if that is the end result, let's figure out what that needs yeah. to look like. And then as decisions come up, let's make sure that you're making the decisions that fit that as the, as the priority, knowing that priorities may change over time too. So, and we've talked about this in different iterations, financial planning is not a static, let's set the course and we're just gonna right. blindly follow that forever. Twists and turns are going to come, priorities may change, goals may change in the future. Um, but at least having something gives you direction even if you even even if you don't know what that final end result is, just heading in the right directions oftentimes is is a, is good enough. Yeah, and I think about these two scenarios that we've now shared and going through the bear market that we went through, inflation yeah. still uber high. You know, people still yeah. have their anxieties. It puts us in the spot where if we're going to have a review with these two specific situations we're talking about, it's not hey portfolio's down. You know, here's what this now means, and we're giving all this market commentary. It's Hey, that cup of coffee on the front porch, not affected. You know, your yeah. ability to travel over to Georgia, not affected, right? Yep. I know this isn't fun to see over here, but you're still where you need to be. It helps us a lot keep people where I think they need to be both mentally and emotionally with what ends up being the financial planning side of things, right? It yeah. needs to be that, that context. So, yeah. Yeah. So are we good? To, let's go to question number three. Uh, yes. So I'm question number going to ask yeah. you to do it because I'm actually trying to remember what that yeah. phraseology is. Well, I have, I have it in front of me. So, right. First question, you have all the money you need. Second question, you still have all the money you need, but you only have five to 10 years somewhere in that range. The last question is the, you talk to your doctor again, and it's worse than they had anticipated. You have, you have one yeah. day, you've got 24 hours to live. And the, the comment is, notice what feelings arise as you confront your very real mortality. Ask yourself, what dreams will be left unfulfilled? What do you wish you had finished? And what do you wish you had done? So now it's more of the focus on what, what would I have done differently now knowing I have one day? It's, it's the focus on the regret. Again, regret, just looking yeah. through that. Yeah, looking through that lens of, okay, what would I have prioritized now? Yeah. And some people are really quite good at the Oof. whole YOLO. You only live once, you know, <laughs> no regrets. Um, yeah. But then there's a whole other segment of society that I am in that, mm -hmm. you know, will always look back, you know, try to maximize, oh, I could have done this. I should have done that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's a completely different way to come at, you know, the same idea here. If you would regret not having done it, then what is stopping you from prioritizing that now? Yeah. Yeah, so I'll, I'll throw out one last, maybe one last, you know, client scenario. Came to us with the goal to retire early, meaning, you know, 50, 55, or maybe not 50, but 55, wanting to retire early. That dictated different things in the financial plan and then experienced some loss of a, a, of a very close friend in their life at a young age. Then there was a family member that just had debilitating health issues and very quickly pivoted to, I'm young. We don't know how much time we have. I want to be able to spend it with those that I care about because, you know, tomorrow is not guaranteed. Um, and even just, again, having that kind of as the, the focal point or the, the guiding light, it, it ultimately just leads to that prioritization, figuring out if this is what I want to do now, which for him, it was, I want, I want a cabin by the lake. I want peace and quiet. There's a common theme oh, yeah. here, I think, with a lot of these people not wanting to be in the hustle and bustle of society. Um, how do we make that work, right? Because you said it earlier, it's, we're, it's not our role to say, no, you shouldn't do that. It's if this is what you want to do, fantastic. Well, let's just make sure that everything else kind of lines up to allow that to happen. Or at the very least, let's explore the trade-offs if there are any, knowing that there's consequences to all of our decisions, good and bad, and at least feel good with the, the trade-offs yeah. or the sacrifices that you may have to make if, if this is where you place the priority. Yeah, because buying a second property is going to be a really bad idea for a lot of people. <laughs> right. But when it, when it truly does align to what you're looking to do, then again, we can be financial planners here. We could have that conversation on, should I liquidate assets? Am I taking out a loan? How am I going to mm -hmm. pay for this? By the way, am I going to have to work a couple extra years now? Um, yeah. 
you, we go through those dominoes. That is a part of the job that we need to do. But yeah, another great example, um, all the way to the clients that, you know, we've talked about this on other podcasts that maybe decide to retire a little bit early to get out of that hustle and bustle out of the stress. Oh yeah. Yeah. But it's just, all of this helps us articulate the trade-offs and maybe that's the key word if we can understand whether you're coming at it from all the money not enough time or the world of mm -hmm. regret how can we efficiently put these pieces of the puzzle together give you the context for that and then move variables as we need so so that you're comfortable going yes this does matter so i'm willing to sacrifice this over here or adjust this over here because it's clear that this is what matters most yeah yeah so what started out as a really fun podcast talking about winning the lottery, you know, quickly leads <laughs> to, oh, crap, I have one day left to live. What didn't I do that I wanted to do? But ultimately, the point is, it's a, it's a very natural and actually a, a powerful thought exercise to go through, yeah. right? If, if I win the lottery, what would that allow me to do to really figure out what matters to you in life? Where do you want to place that? priority and, and that focus. And then if you have somebody in your life, a financial advisor, financial planners like us, let's figure out how to align your wealth, yeah. align, align your, your money to, to get you to that point, allow you to do the things that actually matter to you. Cause that's ultimately where that fulfillment and contentment in life should come from. Perfect. I love that as a summary. And to, like you said, the tens of people listening, um, <laughs> go, go through it, you know, have a, yeah. If it's your thing, have a beer, a glass of wine on a, yeah. I don't know, a Friday night and make it happen. Um, yeah. And then share, share with us what you learned. Yep. Yeah. We'd love that. Hey, everyone. Adam and I really appreciate you tuning in. Please note that the opinions we voiced in the show are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific recommendations for any individual. To determine which strategies or investments may be most appropriate for you, consult with your attorney, your accountant, and financial advisor or tax advisor prior to making any decisions or investing. Thanks for listening.